From Washington, this is VOA News. I'm Jim Bertel reporting. A team of international chemical weapons experts visited a site in the Syrian town of Douma Saturday to collect samples as it tries to determine whether chemical weapons were used there on April 7th. Jacob Greaves reports on evacuations from the area. A video uploaded to social media showed Syrian rebels withdrawing from an enclave northeast of Damascus on Saturday. It comes as part of a surrender agreement. Some will go to eastern Syria, where Islamic State still holds some territory, and others to rebel enclaves in the northwest. It restores state control over the eastern Kalamun enclave and marks another victory for President Bashar al-Assad. That was reporter Jacob Greaves. Nikki Haley, the U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, welcomes North Korea's announcement that it has suspended nuclear and long-range missile tests. She credits the U.N. Security Council for achieving this. You know, in the case of North Korea, you can see the Security Council really came together and was able to enforce sanctions on North Korea, isolate them until they had good behavior. And now we're seeing they're wanting to come to the table. Speaking at an informal working meeting of the Security Council, ambas- uh, Security Council ambassadors in southern Sweden, Nikki Haley says the dip- diplomats are still deadlocked over the issue of Syria. Barbara Bush was remembered as the first lady of the greatest generation during her funeral Saturday. The celebration of her life was attended by four former U.S. presidents and hundreds of other people who filled the church with laughter as much as tears, with many recalling her quick wit and her devotion to family. From Washington, this is VOA News. The International Committee of the Red Cross says one of its employees was killed Saturday in a shooting in the Yemeni city of Taiz. ICRC spokesperson Adnan Hizam said the organization was trying to find out more information about the incident. No words can describe this horrible incident that targeted an emergency worker. Yemeni officials and worker who came out to help in Yemen which is going through a humanitarian crisis and is in dire need of humanitarian assistance to be multiplied and not targeted. Yemeni officials and the ICRC named the man as Hana Lahoud, a Lebanese national who was killed in Taiz in southwestern Yemen by unknown gunmen who opened fire on a car. U.S. Treasury Secretary Stephen Mnuchin says he is contemplating a visit to China. The trip will focus on issues that have global leaders concerned about a potential trade war that could undercut a global economic recovery. South African central bank's Lesisia Kagango said there were only losers in trade conflicts. We keep trade open. Uh, We um, ensure that we work uh, within the multilateral system that uh, we have to make sure that if there are disputes, those disputes are this, those disputes are are resolved. Mnuchin says he discussed the possible trip and potential trade opportunities with the new head of China's central bank. India's cabinet on Saturday approved the death penalty for rapists of girls below the age of 12. This came after Prime Minister Narendra Modi held an emergency meeting in response to nationwide outrage after a series of cases. Asha Devi, the mother of a 2012 gang rape victim, said the measures don't go far enough. I am not satisfied with this because for minors under 12 years of age, it is fine, but what about the ones who are above that age? So I feel that there is no more heinous crime than rape. There is no larger pain, no bigger accident. So I think every rapist should be hanged. The measure will go into effect once signed by India's president. Actor Vern Troyer, who is famous for playing Mini-Me in the Austin Powers films, died Saturday. No cause or place of death were given for the 49-year-old actor, but a statement from his spokesman discusses depression and suicide, and Troyer had publicly discussed struggling with alcohol addiction. That's the latest news. I'm Jim Bertel, VOA News. That's the latest world news from VOA.